Hey guys, how is the end of August going for you? I trust that everyone is well and good. This audio is really deep but gets really interesting at the end about the cork where they talk about I paid $190 to understand this. <laughs> well, this is how you keep yourself healthy. Please listen to it more than once so your mind can grasp it. And I believe some of you may have watched my earlier video where I'm promoting defense bracelet. Make your dreams come true. Wishing an awesome day. Enjoy and chill. Thank you. First of all, I'm very, very grateful for everything that you've taught all of us and brought into my life. Um, I've been trying to formulate my question for a good part of a year now. <laughs> so um, I just jotted something down. That That's hard because sense. it changes every I know. five minutes. It really does. So but we <laughs> picked you for the one that's active now. <laughs> um, well, I'm just going to peek for a minute because my, my mind went, just went blank. But um, <laughs> how, how does your belief system or your alignment affect the cells of your body? And can that alignment truly uh, reverse or eradicate a diagnosis? An Everything is about alignment. And all illness is about resistance. Sometimes resistance is the path of least resistance. In other words, we, we, we really want to talk about in context with resistance, contrast, because in contrast, there is clarity of what is wanted. And so it is certain that how you feel is about what you're doing vibrationally. And the better you feel, then the more open and in alignment you are, and the more you are allowing the energy to flow. So, and again, it's about balance. So if you are asking for more energy, then you are allowing to flow, then something has to shift. You have to find some way of releasing the resistance in order to allow the energy to flow. So, our friend was talking about her dog and we were talking a little bit about Jerry. So when you make your transition into non-physical, there is a releasing of all resistance. So if, the, if there is an assumption, and there commonly is, about we're talking about two different subjects here. We're going to come back completely to the subject of physical well-being in just a moment. But in light of what we were just talking about, we want to put this in there as well. When you make your transition into non-physical, there is a releasing of all resistance. And all of you, as you come forth, know that you're here in these physical bodies in a temporary, temporary focus and that you will re-emerge into non-physical. So there's a misunderstanding that goes something like if someone makes their re-emergence, as Jerry did, through diagnosis or through illness, then something has gone wrong because... The outcome, as, certainly as far as Esther was concerned and as far as uh, physical family and friends was concerned, the outcome was not what was wanted. But when you step back to understand that it was always the intention to reemerge into non-physical and that when the energy is moving faster than this physical body is sustaining because the desire is stronger than this physical life experience is satisfying, that then even that path of least resistance is not a wrong path so I just want to sort of stick that in there is it it's always something that sticks in some of your vibrational cross that goes something like if the death experience is the death experience a right or a wrong experience mm -hmm. and you have different opinions about it our friend a moment ago said well I don't object to the idea of death I just object to the idea of death of someone that I care about or someone that I care about that is so young mm -hmm. In other words, so you put all of your limitations upon when it's right and when it's not right. And we say it is an inevitable experience that you get to choose from your combined non-physical and physical perspective, the timing of. Now back to the subject of physical wellness. Yes, the cells of your body are responding first and foremost to what you're doing vibrationally. And so, and illness is always about energy moving faster than is being allowed. 
That's always what it is. It's always about energy being summoned at a fa and a achieving a faster rate of energy than you are allowing. And so anytime, and you know that, you know what resistance is. In, in other words, the train that goes through the valley that, uh, that Esther can see from her house in, in California, every couple of years, they send a... Uh, machine down that track that has a tight grip on the rails in order to clean the rails and the resistance is such that it makes a big rooster tail that flies high into the sky and they always do it at night and the neighbors all gather around to watch this fascinating rooster that's moving through it goes very slow and the resistance is such that it makes big sparks it's really fun to see so you understand resistance resistance is the slowing of uh, energy it's a slowing of something so yeah the answer is yes so then what are you going to do about it what what do you do about resistance well if we were standing in any of your physical shoes we'd get out ahead of it we wouldn't wait until that and it doesn't matter if something is happening but we wouldn't wait until something some evidence of resistance is there we'd get out ahead of it mm -hmm. and just make sure that we're flowing freely mm -hmm. And then not only do you feel better, but your physical body is performing better and feeling better. You have more energy. You have more stamina. You have more flexibility. You have more physical comfort. You have more of a delicious relationship with your body. You are more sensual. Your physical senses are more keen. If everything looks brighter. Everything, you can hear better. You can smell better. And everything about your physical body is enhanced. The less resistance that you have going on in your physical experience. So that's always the answer to feeling good. Mm -hmm. And manifestations are always the evidence of how you're feeling. No exceptions. Yeah. And, and um, I do that oftentimes. I, um, I reel it in and I, I just think about how I feel now. And most of the time when I think about how I feel now, I feel great. Well, here's something to think about since this is something that's on your mind and something that you care about. So it's something that's exaggerated in the vortex. So the energy is moving as our friend was talking earlier about the idea coming, mm -hmm. the idea coming. Well, sometimes when that idea comes, in fact, often when that idea comes, it's that source energy perspective wanting to call your attention to how good you feel. Mm -hmm. In other words, are you starting to understand the, the difference between setting a goal and saying, I'm going to think about this and I'm going to do these things. And instead of that, intending to feel good and doing your best to feel good as best you can. And then noticing the thoughts that are coming. Mm -hmm. Esther said to Jerry one day, I think about you all the time. And he said back to her, how do you know it's you thinking about me and not me thinking about you? Mm -hmm. Now, that's really worth thinking about. That's really worth thinking about because so when, so when these ideas occur to you, when an idea that feels good occurs to you, don't nitpick over whether you thought about it or whether source thought about it, because in the majority of cases, in fact, in every case it's source thinking about it. It's source comprehending it. It's source knowing it. And it's you being vibrationally up to speed with it. Mm -hmm. Don't you love knowing that? I just felt what source feels about my body just now. That's yeah. where that's what inspiration is, you see. Mm -hmm. So we know in the beginning, we called this gathering the science of deliberate creation. And you all got so carried away with it. Deliberate, 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 deliberate. We said the basis of this philosophy is freedom and growth and joy. It's the basis of your life. And you said, yes, freedom, freedom and growth, 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 <laughs> freedom and joy and growth, 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 growth. We say, yes, expansion is what's the inevitable outcome of all of this. But if you will put your attention upon the joy, then everything else will take care of itself. The freedom will be felt by you. The expansion will be enjoyed by you. But it's all about the joy. Mm -hmm. So then we stopped calling it the science of deliberate creation because you got so human about it. 
you, you made it hard. You made lists. You got too much on your to-do list and not enough on your to feel list. You got too much on your action list, and not enough on your energy list. You cared too much about what you were observing and not enough about what you were feeling about what you were observing. So then we began calling it the art of allowing. And it is an art. It is an art because it's something that you practice and you get better and better and better and better and better at it. And now we're explaining to you that as you sift through this magnificent variety, that it causes you to identify all kinds of things that you want. But you're usually, in fact, rarely vibrationally up to speed with these new things that you're identifying because they're born out of your awareness of contrast. And so you know what you don't want and what you do want. And you know what you don't want. And you know what you do want. But you're standing in the not yet manifestation of it. And so you're flowing this rocket of desire, but you're not up to speed with that rocket of desire. But you put it in the vortex and sources on it. And law of attraction is responding to it. And the cooperative components are being gathered. Here it all is. It's being gathered. And so now the only question is, thus the title, Art of Allowing. What's your relationship with this vortex? Are you allowing it or are you denying it? Are you allowing it or are you resisting it? And you can tell by the way you feel whether you're up to speed with it or you're not. So now we want you to not worry about anything. And we want you to try to get up to speed with the vibration. Well, how do I know if I'm up to speed with it? Well, first of all, it'll manifest. But then, then there's no point in talking about it because you really know it once it manifests, it's done. It's really done before it manifests, but you don't want to call it done until it manifests. So how do you know? How do you know you're up to speed with it? Well, you can tell by the way you feel. Mm -hmm. So then you say, okay, we'll care about how we feel so that we can get the stuff out of our vortex and into our life. And we say, that's not what we meant. It is what happens, but it's not the way we want you to look at it. Because when you look at it that way, now your awareness is on the fact that it's in the vortex and not out here where you can see it and hear it and smell it and taste it and touch it. So now, once again, you're introducing resistance into the subject because you're keeping score of the manifestation. So now we say... If you will just focus on how you feel, if you will care about how you feel, if breathing deep feels good to you and you will do it regularly, you'll practice the ownership of a high vibration. Mm -hmm. If quieting your mind feels good to you, you will practice the vibration of a higher vibration. You want to practice absence of doing that thing you do that brings your vibration down. So then we resurrect this old, old, old analogy that we offered in the very beginning days that Esther was allowing us to flow through her in this way. You're like a cork bobbing on the surface of the water. That cork is up there in that high, good flying, good feeling, good feeling, good feeling, high flying, non-resistant vibration bobbing on the surface. In this analogy, that's pure positive energy. You can hold the cork under the water. But when you let go of it, when you get distracted from whatever it is that's causing you to hold it under the water, the cork bobs right back to the surface. But you all have a hard time accepting that. You keep thinking. It's almost like the questions you ask are, okay, Abraham, my cork's under the water. What can I do to get it up there? What can I do? What can I do? Is there a mechanism? Is there, some, is there a contraption? Is there something we could put under the sea that will push that cork up? What can I do to get that cork to go up? Because it's under the water. And we say, let go of it. And you say, oh, that's far too simple. <laughs> There's got to be way more than that. Anybody can just let a cork float. I've paid $195. <laughs> Anybody can let a cork float. I don't know what to do. And we say... We want you to just relax. We want you to accept the well-being of your experience. We want you to understand that you're supposed to float. And when you're not, it's because you're doing something that's keeping you from floating. And if you will stop doing whatever it is that's keeping your cork from floating, you'll feel better immediately. And if you keep practicing that feeling, your cork will float. And then into your grid, into your point of attraction, will flow the ideas and the inspiration and the relationships and the delicious exposure to life experience just the way you knew it would be mm -hmm. really good thank you yeah <laughs>